pointed finger of the late man. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jerry Anderson here. It's 29 minutes to 11 o'clock in this fine Monday morning, of which I'm aware little of, which means no sense at all, but I know exactly what I mean. So why don't you know what I mean? If you want to contact this program, the number to ring is 0645 555 678. Give us a ring if you wish. Many will. Many will be disappointed. Many others will be enthralled. And indeed, their sense of these heightened. 0645 555 678. Do you remember you sent Jory out on his date? Yes. Well, he he wants to talk to you about it. Is he there at the moment? Yes. Good. Very important. Yes. I've been looking forward to it. Thank you. Um, Jordy is a gentleman who is one of our correspondents, but uh, through no fault of his own and through no request of his own, I figured that maybe he needed a woman because he sounded like a lonely sort of a chap, and we've, we've got him one, and he's been out with her. Boy, Jordy, good morning. Hello? <laughs> is he, is well, Jordy the... should be on one. Well, he's not, you know. Hello, Jordy. Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, Hello, Jordy. Uh, uh, good morning, Jordy. How are you? Not too bad, isn't it? What kind of a day is it down where you are? Oh, lovely and sunny. Everything is okay? Oh, yes. There was a nice touch of frost this morning. Well, that keeps you alert. Oh, yes. Well, can I say this to you? You sound like a man who is well content and pleased. Oh, I Well, I'm all in for the winter. And I didn't mean that. Taking it easy, you know. I know you have your foodstuffs and your... You know, all that you need. Well, what have you got in for the winter as a matter of interest? Oh, just plenty realize... of blocks and turf and blocks and turf. Would you keep spuds in? Oh, yes. Anything else you would keep in? Uh, well, uh, I would store a, a, a buy in bulk or carrots and, and beetroot and store them the only way is store the old potatoes low in a, in a bing outside the yard and, you know, come yeah. more with soil yeah. and keep them fresh. You, you don't have a deep freezer, then? No, not really, no. You don't worry about that kind of stuff? No. Well, I think you're absolutely right because the stuff is far better if you just store it. Maybe, as long as you get somewhere that's not terribly damp. So you've got your carrots in. Oh, yes. And, and your spuds and your turf and your coal. Uh-huh. Well, what else can a man want? Well, that's it. Well, listen, without prying into your personal life, I, I would just like to ask you how you get on with your woman. Oh, the very best, Jerry. Very best. A very down-to-earth person. I don't want any names or anything. No, or, no. Or, or, oh, no, no. Or any details. Me. No, no, no. Um, well, what did you do? I don't want to know where you went. Did you go to a restaurant? Did you go to a pub? Did you go to a hotel? Did you go well, to... we went just went to a cafe and yeah, well, what did had you a not... walk around and now hopefully... Well, was this the first time you'd seen this young yes, lady? Yes, this was the first time. And uh, as far as you can recollect, uh, can you remember what her reaction was when she saw you? And oh, indeed... well, a bit of a surprise now. Really? Did yes. she, she arched an eyebrow, did she? She did. Well, did she later on communicate to you what that surprise would have been? Uh, um, what, well, what, what? she thought it was maybe somebody who uh, come out of the back of beyond the, on the hair standing on the head or something, you know, or Wellington Beach or something. On yes, and you had obviously made an effort. Oh, yes. So, what did she think? Um, she was surprised to see you. Uh, yeah, well, surprised the way I looked, you know. Mm-hmm. And what did you think of her? Oh, Beyond my expectations, really. Oh, really? That sounds oh, yes. good. In other words, what you're saying is she thought she was a bit of a cracker. Is that what yes, you're saying? Yes, yes, a real wee cracker. So what did you do then? Did you go into a cafe, first of oh, all? Oh, yes. I, I think that's always a good idea to go well, in and I'd just... open the cafe, you say. And did you have any food at all? Oh, yes. Well, I had a bite to eat and then a view around the town. And, and you had a promenade around it. People ah. don't do that much anymore. You just walked around the town. That's right. And then what? Went up to the market and got a lot of odds and ends, you know. You bought some stuff? Uh huh. Right. And what did you. Um, so, the, what, what, what time is this date at? Was it an early one or. Oh, a, 12 noon. It's a bit early for, you know. So, well, by the time you had to walk around the town, had the bite to eat, which would have been lunch, I suppose, um, uh, did you two of you go home early? But no, well, I went home er- earlier than she did, really, because. You know, the market's a big place, and... I know. I sort of took a wrong turn, and she took... I went one way, and then we missed it, so... Oh, you were separated? Uh-huh. Separated before you even met each other? Oh, no, we hadn't met. Yeah, okay. But well. then we got sort of separated as the day went on. But uh, I had a nice letter from her, so... 
Yeah. So Hopefully she... she's coming down to see the white wife's house. Oh. And the hands and stuff. Well, so there's no uh, there's no possibility that she would have thought that you ran away. Or... Oh no, no. It or that you just... would have thought she was she was avoiding you in any way. Oh no. Well, this is good. I'm glad to hear this is working out okay for you. She's going to come down and see you sometime. Uh huh. Well, who knows? We may soon hear the patter of little livestock. Oh, um, I think we're a bit over the hill for that, Charlie. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you, you get tablets these days. Ah, uh, God, but. But, I mean, you know, I would never put that on the back burner. No. Keep it on the, we'll it on the front burner where it belongs. Well, just leave it the morning, at you. All right, then. Well, will you let me know what I'll happens? I'll let you know, Jai. Okay, well, I'm glad, to he- I'm glad to hear that things are moving apace. Okay, now. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, you didn't tell me that 40 years for the wee... We haven't got any yet. There are the new wee bakery in Bond Bridge. There are new ones coming out. I'm, oh. al- I'm almost afraid to look at them. All right. There are new ones in the pipeline. Uh, I think we've got a question for you, Jordy. Oh, yes, Jordy, how do you pres- preserve carrots? Now, not the, the lady doesn't want to put them into your freezer. She says there's some sort of soil or something. That you can yes, yeah, 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 dig, uh, if you have a good uh, loose soil, you know, not out have a have a soil, you know, a nice good. dry what? soil. Well, you just make a wee ding. You a, get your spade a, and you throw your... A ding? Uh, what do you call a bing, you know, a wee a, small a, bing. A, a used to, mine used to bing potatoes years ago. Bing? Ah. Uh, well, you're, 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 you're dig, you dig your... Hold on, no, 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 sorry. What, what is a bing? It's, you're, it's like digging a trench, you know. Yes. And you put the soil at each side. Yes. And then you throw a drop of straw down, uh, you know, your trench you dig. Then you put all your charts or whatever you're storing, potatoes if you're storing or charts... What, what was that? What was that other word there? A trench. Tr- yes. What is it? A trenchard. A trench. A, tr- a trench. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. So you dig it, yeah. and you soil it each side, and then you put a drop of straw at the bottom of it, and you store your carrots in loosely, and then you shake a drop of straw over the top of them, and then you put your soil back over and make it, you know, like a slope. You yeah. know, like a wee slope, you know. Yeah, so the, so the water drains yeah. off. Yeah. So yeah. any time you want to lock a carriage out, you go and open up your bing. Just pick a... your spade and... Open your bing? Yes, and dig the, down the side and pull out whatever you need and then cover it back up again. Right, that sounds eminently sensible to me. So that's how it's done. Well, thank you, Geordie. That's it. Thank you very much. Listen, we'll get back to you about uh, various other things in the course of the next few days. And in the meantime... Keep your bing dry. Oh, well covered. Okay, right. Right, dry. Thank you, Johnny. Bye, 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 bye. You know, when you need a lock or something, yeah. open up your bing. That could be a motto for life. Yeah. If you need something, open up your bing. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. You could drop the one about the tree. You can use that one, eh? The expression you had about the tree. Was it Johnny gave you that one? Yeah. 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 Keep your bing dry. He said that uh, a tree can only hold what it's comfortable yeah. with. Yeah. So if you need a lock or something, open up your bing. Eh? There are too many people with closed bings in the world today. That's why the world is in a state of chances. I have a letter here from a gentleman out on the Cave Hill Road. He says, I'd like to mention a few points of interest in the general public. If any of the gentlemen listeners are thinking of buying a shirt, then Down Patrick is the place to go. Apparently, there are some queer-looking shirts there for one ninety nine and other ones for four ninety nine. Oh, also, Jerry, I saw an old man pushing a car with his wife and the car had an orange disabled badge in the window. I said to myself, there's something wrong here. Quite rightly, sir. Also, Jerry, that boy that does the spoof song, what's he doing in there? Don't be playing him anymore. He's crap. Tom Waits is brilliant. He goes on then to say wounding things about John Bennett, and he also says that George Jones should be stopped. And he says, I saw wee Hugo Duncan in Belfast the other day. He was wearing a baseball hat and dark glasses. He looked like a paramilitary. I remember saying, hello, out the window to you, Mr. Anderson, in Corn Market one day. We were in a big blue lorry, which nearly hit you. You never answered back, probably white and petrified with fear after nearly being crushed by a lorry. How is Robert Achondriak? Well, I don't see him much anymore. Are you bringing back the old rickety wheel? We're considering doing that. May bring Robert back from that of my loud by the BBC, but they may hit me over the head with a truncheon. For God's sake, don't be playing Christmas Eve in no man's land. Jerry, I think you and David Dunseith are the two best DJs. On Radio Ulster, 
David will enjoy that. Do you like that one? David, will, David likes being David, David likes yeah. being called a DJ. Yeah. I would like to hear David present a program with music. Uh, here's the Hollies. Yeah, for goodness sake. For goodness. The Beatles here from Liverpool. <laughs> he ain't heavy, he's my brother. <laughs> what other one? Yeah. Uh, oh, come on. Let's, that's, that's a good one. Let's have song titles that David Dunsey would introduce. Right? What would be the, what be, what would be the one? That... He's my brother. I like that one. What about... The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. <laughs> come on, what give me a... Dave D. Dunsey, Dave Biggie, Biggie Wicked. Dick. Oh, bend it. Bend <laughs> it. For goodness sake, bend it. <laughs> Can't me shape you any way you want me. <laughs> I like it. I really do. Like uh, help! Yeah. What about help? <laughs> An appropriate one for I need somebody, help. somebody, <laughs> anybody to help me. For goodness sake. Anyway, anyway, the person thinks that me and uh, David don't see the best DJs in radio. So there's a mention of you there. Oh. It says I would have to flip a coin between Sean Co Coyle and Tommy Miller for <laughs> third place. Tommy Miller, as you well know, is the man who does the pipes and drums right. there, and the, the, the bands and the flurry right. and skill the pipes. I go for I, heads. I can't do him. You go for heads. Right. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Uh, Let's see. Heads. Heads. Ah, I'm you're third. the one. Tommy yeah. Miller's third. Sorry, Tommy. Sorry. Sean, go back to what you're doing. You know what I was thinking uh, this morning? There was a tinge of winter in the air this morning. I thought to myself when I, when, I, when I got up this morning, I said, what a wonderful life. I was just thinking this morning, I was, uh, I was climbing in my bedroom window trying not to wake anybody up. It was about 7 o'clock in the morning and the early sunlight was glinting weakly on the lazy waters of Loch Foyle. The birds were flying around. I heard a great beating of wings above my head, flying in a V formation. I saw a flock of wild geese winging southwards to warmer climes away from the nastiness that is us. They seemed to be saying goodbye as they kind of honked their way across the sky. I even thought they could make out a message. Did you ever think that, you know, when the wild geese are... please? Huh? I'm sorry, were you speaking? Yes, I was talking about the wild geese flying south, actually. And do you ever think, do you know when they go, do you ever see them going overhead in a V formation yes. and there's a little white underbelly on them and the mm -hmm. sun glints to catch the white underneath and their great wings are flapping and sometimes there's one behind and then the V waits for them mm -hmm. and they're going, hm, hm. Well, do you know? Geese with hair lips. Geese with hair lips. But I, I do you, so for the first time this morning, I think it was maybe the drink, I said to myself, the geese are trying to Where say were something. Oh, I'm so long last night. <clears throat> Don't, never mind that. This is today. I never worry about last night. But I, I thought the geese were sending me a match. I know what they were saying to me. Farm an agreement. Farm an executive. Farm an executive. All right. Yeah? All right. All right. That's wonderful. There's a wee coffee. You can take a wee quickie. Yeah. Hello, good morning. Farm an executive. Farm. Hello, good morning. Well, turn that off. Hello. No, don't turn it off at all. It's getting good. Hello. Who's that? Hello, Jerry. Good morning. Jerry, I want to find out as a pensioner. Yes. Um, I'm a pensioner, and what I want to know is, how is it that pensioners come over here from England and use their concession passes? But Belfast or Northern Ireland pensioners, supposed to be British when it suits them, can't use their passes over in England. Ah, that's the kind of worms that you're now opening, which I, I Would hesitate you to... Would for me? Well, I, as a matter of fact, I will find out for you. I think it's something to do with the... Uh, we have different, different setup here. But you shouldn't, uh, shouldn't let that worry you. Uh, I know it's, it's a worrying thing, but you shouldn't let it dwell upon your mind. It's not a worry, it's annoying. It just seems a shame that you're talking uh -huh. about English people coming over here and trailing all over our buses for nothing. Uh-huh. Whereas we have to pay. We have to pay when we go over there. That's right, Jan. It's yeah. a sad reflection on the system of the way it operates. It is, it's terrible. The geese were right. Quirm an executive. Oh, we'll have to as soon as we get wings. a government, the better. We'll have to spread wings then. I think so, and yes. And become geese. Maybe somebody would... Yeah, we'll spread wings and become geese. That's as good, a, <laughs> good an idea as I've heard all day. <laughs> all right, then maybe someone would ring me up and explain to me why this is the case. Right. But don't you be getting upset about it. Oh, no, okay. All right. I'd not sleep all night now worrying about it. No, no, don't, don't let that interfere with your sleep. That's okay, then. All right, Jerry. Right, don't you worry about it. You find out for me, well. I'll find out for you. I'm the oracle. Thing. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I've got some uh, letters here and uh, correspondence, which I should deal with. Anne sends me a very nice card. Thank you very much. And she says, uh, I, just, I won't tell you what she said. It's just nice. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, Michael McLaughlin writes to me, and he seems to want to apologize to me for something or other. And I have to say to him, no apology needed at all, sir. Thank you very much. Another nice letter. 
I've got a very long letter here which I barely understand, but I read it two or three times and I can see a glint of something. I don't know whether to share it to you, with you or not because some of you may not be at yourselves at this time in the morning. And also before I go on, is there a Mr. Germanson, Germanson out there? Apparently he found a black wallet in the Fountain Bar in Belfast and uh, a couple of ladies uh, were uh, having a little sherry and uh, they left to go elsewhere and uh, one of them left a black wallet behind but the barman knew where they were going and was able to tell the gentleman where they were going and he phoned them up when the place where they eventually ended up having another little sherry and the barman, being stupid, took down the wrong number. So if there's a Mr. Jeminson out there who's got a black wallet uh, belonging to a lady who had a wee sherry last night in Belfast starting off in the Fountain Bar. If you're out there, give us a ring here at 0645 555 678 and we'll give you the number of the person who owns the black wallet. Isn't it marvellous the things we go through here? And here's a very complicated letter and I think you should brace yourself for this. But it, it explains one of the... Uh, or something that we mentioned in this programme before. It's a very lengthy explanation. And I don't know whether to start this or not but I think it's good for the people because after all, you know, you're not being challenged enough. You're not being challenged you have to listen very carefully to all this. A man writes to me and he says, Dear Jerry, further to your advice to turn all things electrical off, I thought you'd be interested in the following. I quoted this from a book. This call came about because a man rang this program and said that, uh, excuse me, I'm just scratching myself. It's very difficult for me to get a good scratch when you're on the radio. There's so many people watching. Uh, this man was saying that uh, he has a radio at home and whenever he turns it off, it won't go off. It stays on even when it's on the off switch and only on this program. It goes off for Bennett and everybody else, but it won't, be, it won't allow itself to be turned off while this program is on. I regard that as a compliment. But this man offers an explanation. He said, I have some interesting background to the modern energy systems. The gentleman I talked to had worked with a number of free energy inventors and he realized that free energy technology worked in a clockwise direction and so was in harmony with the spin of the chakras, which, are the energy, which is the energy vortex in the human body. But most conventional, electricity technology was anti-clockwise, therefore in conflict with the chakras. He believed this was helping to close down the chakra system and delink humanity from the other levels of consciousness, in other words, electricity is driving us mad. This is one reason why the reptilian brotherhood, that's the... Uh, ruck of capitalism, bankers and estate agents, have suppressed, often through murder, the development of free energy technology. The average wiring system in the home works to 60 cycles per second, which is very detrimental to the body and affects brain wave activity. We live in a pulsating ocean of electromagnetism generated by modern technology, and this is constantly affecting human physical emotion and mental health. The human mind, body and emotions are under an incredible assault and the countdown to the great shift because the brotherhood of secret societies are desperate to ensure that humanity as a whole does not make the consciousness leap that will take us beyond the reptilian frequencies. And they're also trying to stop us going into banks. Did you see that program last night in Ta Panorama on BBC? No. After the dinosaurs. Did you see the dinosaurs last night? No. Did you not see Walking with Dinosaurs? No. What a fabulous program. So? <laughs> you have no imagination at all, have you? No. BBC I went to see Jurassic Park. <laughs> the BBC took that. three years to make this. This is the Jurassic Park's Mickey Mouse compared to this. It. Oh, it was great. I, I mean, mean, you're all right. You've got a big. I've got a big TV. Screen. You could have won too if you took some money out of your trouser I, pocket and spent it. You've got a big screen, you see. No, but anyway, the fellow was. What am I talking about? What would did you, I start would, to say here? Kathy wants to sing to you and to you. Tell her to wait. I've, I wanted to say something to you here. Uh, yes. Uh, did you see Panorama last night about the uh, you banks? Already, you already said... Oh, about no, the I didn't banks. say that, but no. the banks. They're, they're trying to get rid of people with no money. No. Do you remember the time banks used to encourage you to join because we look after your every need? Yeah. Now, do you know what they don't want? They want what they call the lemons. There's a certain right. crowd of people they call the lemons. Right. And they are people who don't earn much money, but they have an account. Right. S suppose that you only earned 800 quid a week. Right. <laughs> How I could you love that? <laughs> suppose, <laughs> now, suppose you, suppose you earned £200 a week and you had a bank account. It's more like it. <laughs> and, more and like you, it. And I think you're... Are you a lemon? <laughs> now, if, you earned, if you earned 200 quid a week and you put it in at the end of every month, that's 800 quid every month, right. and you spent 800 quid every month, right? right? So you never had any money, no savings, and you're just ticking through, just putting your mm -hmm, paycheck mm -hmm. through. They don't want you. You're a lemon. They get rid of you. And if you lived in a whole area with a lot of lemons like yourself, they'd take the bank away. Right. Close down the bank. Well, who do they want? They want people like me. Oh. <laughs> 
No, they want people with disposable income. They want people with lots of spare income. They want people who will buy Tessas and Niftas or whatever you call them. Yeah. And they want people who will save money. And they want people who will borrow big amounts of money and spend big amounts of money and drink and run around with women. That's what they want. Right. I yeah. was told. I was told of a, 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 bar, a, a certain bar in this town. Yes. Just tell you where they don't want people. Uh, they don't want people. Who drink under? No, they don't want, they don't want people over twenty five. <laughs> they don't want people over twenty five. Well, what would they do if bar. I came along? And do you, do you know what they're doing to get, to get rid of them? But this is true. This is true. They're, uh, they 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 instruct the staff to play loud music. Play the music, play it very, very loud. And when they complain, just say, I'm sorry, but uh, we're under instructions. To play loud music to try and drive the over 25-year-olds out of the bar. Mm. Oh, <laughs> the first time I ever saw anything like that was in America years ago. They haven't done that yet. But what they used to do in America, you know when they, when they closed the bar about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, yeah. what they used to do is they used to turn the air conditioning up full blast. And you'd be sitting there, no, with your pint, yeah. no, we half a dozen that you stockpiled. Yeah. And you've just icy blast would just come out of the walls and blow you out of there. And you couldn't stay because you'd be free and you get pneumonia. They yeah. haven't done that yet. So they're stopping the people coming in, making the music too loud. Make, make well, do you know why yeah. it won't work for me? Uh. I'm deaf. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in every night. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Is it me you're talking to? It is indeed, Kathleen. I'm sorry for keeping you. You're not a bit sorry, Jerry. I am sorry. You're going over a lot of tripe there about bars and all sorts of things. I haven't finished yet. I was starting about the electricity. I was getting onto the left-hand side of the brain there. Oh, were you? All right. Well, I have to tell you, I'm going to sing you a wee song this morning. Another one for this uh, album that I'm doing. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it's unaccompanied. Are you really doing an album? Well, if you ask me to. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I meant was, are you under contract by a major record company? Obviously, the answer is no. Uh, well, I have to wait to see if you'll be my manager. I don't know. My time is spread very thin. Well, okay. I'm working with Daniel at the moment. To see who Daniel's partner was at the Millennium thing, not the... No, the... I did not indeed, Jerry. I have this to do and I want to do it. Did you see who his partner... Oh. Excuse me a second, Kathleen. No. In Daniel's uh, Mystery Ball yes. in Kinkashla, yes. uh, th remember that some of the last partners, some of his partners, they bring a woman along and he know. doesn't know who it is and he's revealed in front of her and he has to do a dance with her. Yes. People like... Uh, we were saying yesterday yes. that, you know, if people were cruel, they could put Julian Simmons or Mamie McFatridge up there. Wouldn't that be a terrible thing? But in the past, you had people like Gloria Honeyford and Dana and Loretta Lynn. Do you know who it was yesterday? I, I don't know. I'm trying to guess, but I can't even think. Go and guess. Oh, um, it's in the paper today. If you read the papers, you'd know. Oh, uh, no. We tried to guess yesterday. Yeah. We couldn't guess. Uh, Do you know who it was? Uh, is it, I, uh, Philomena Bagley. No. Male or female? Uh, hard to tell. It, it is female. Just. Who do you think it was? I I'll, I'll tell you the name, because everybody on. knows except you. Yeah. Mandy Dingle. Who's Mandy Dingle? You don't know who Mandy Dingle is, by God, and you're on the radio. Who's Mandy Dingle? Mandy Dingle's the big fat one out of uh, Emmerdale. No, 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 be careful. I'm sorry, sorry, I forgot that you were fat too, Kelly. Be careful no, now, no, just you be very careful. You don't know who Mandy Dingle is. Oh. Well, you should be sacked. What, Emmerdale? What's yes. Emmerdale? Emmerdale. Apparently Daniel name. watches Emmerdale all the time. Her real name is Lisa Riley, and she does, uh, uh, what do you call that thing that Je Jeffrey Beadle, Jeremy Beadle used to do? The camera thing. Oh, wow. Oh, you know that, yeah, all right. Uh, what did you call that? Her. What's that called? Um, That's called, uh, are you being uh, served or something? something. Like that, I, I you know who you know. remind me of? Who? Podge and Raj. Who's Podge and Raj? They're another double on another channel which shall be nameless. All right, is it RTE? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, Kathleen, you haven't been offered a big contract then by a major record company. Is that well, what you're I'm, trying to say? Well, I'm, uh, it's on the long finger. Oh, <laughs> nothing worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay then. Well, let's not discuss your career until it starts. No. Well, uh, let me tell you that last week was my happy birthday. I think I did play a little request for you, didn't I? And I'm lovely, and if you could see me, I'm well preserved. Oh, I always knew that. Not, uh -huh. a, not a lion in your face. Uh -huh. I'm older than Joan Collins and younger than Liz Taylor. Well, that's... You, no, don't, so you, don't, you, have, you don't have a lot to work with there, really, do you? No. So anyway, Jerry, I have this wee song, and it's unaccompanied. You're not playing your banjo today. Well, the banjo's here with me, but it's not for this song. Well, give us a little plunk of it just for reassurance, just to know that it's there. Uh, well, I'm ready to do this, and I'll plunk in a minute. Okay. I know you can't just plunk whenever you like. 
That's right. Okay. I, I feel reassured when I hear a banjo in the morning. Uh-huh. As our Lord said, there's nothing, nothing better than a banjo in the morning. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Thanks for the memory of Jerry's morning show. When first we said hello, I played my banjo down the phone and life began to glow. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for the memory of meeting with the throng, of singing my wee song. You stood beside me on the stage in case I'd get it wrong. How lovely it was. The BBC was so inviting. The people I met, they're exciting. The audience, they were delighting. It was all oh, such fun and no harm done. Thanks for the memory of what you did for me. It's magic, don't you see? Now everywhere I go, I'm treated like a VIP. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks, Jerry. That's very good, Kathleen. Do you know, that's a very, I don't have to tell you, that's a very difficult song to sing. Yes, it is. And maybe difficult to listen to. No, no, it's, you got it absolutely right. I, I don't know anybody else could sing that unaccompanied. I could. I certainly couldn't sing that unaccompanied. And it's a very nice gesture. Thank you, lovely words. Well, now, I have to tell you another thing. Yes? I read your book. Yes. And uh, the person that you wouldn't mention on the radio that day was responsible for... for uh, selling two or three of your books because I bought two. I'm get sending one to Corolla. Oh, yes. yes. And another thing I want to tell you is that I found myself in it. Did you? Yes. I found myself on page 123 and page 151. I must have a look at that. So now they'll all be rushing out to buy your book <laughs> and good, it'll be a bestseller. That's a good marketing ploy. Yeah. That's good, excellent. Uh-huh. Well, thank you, Cathy. I enjoyed hearing from you and you sang beautifully today and that was a lovely song and the words were good too. That's good. Thank you very much. Well, uh, I'll, do, I'll do my banjo bit another day. Okay, then. All Pl right, Jerry. Pl plunk it later. Thanks very much. Thank bye you, bye. Kathleen. Bye. Bye. What a lovely girl Kathleen is. What a nice song. And she sang that very well. Oh, there's a man on the or maybe a lady on the phone, I don't know. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Morning. This is Moira from Paisley, yes, Scotland. Moira. Yes, Yes. Uh, I phoned you last week, Jerry, to ask if somebody could help me get sc rid of scratches in my walnut wardrobe. And somebody suggests you get a, a wardrobe? A yes, wa and you know it works. Somebody, really? Somebody suggests you get a walnut and peel it? Uh, well, I, I had shelled walnuts in the house. I didn't have to run out for them, as you suggested. You had one sitting there? I had some because I do all my own baking, and I just went up the stairs the minute I... I came off the phone and rubbed it, and you know it just, it works a treat. So I hope this the lady's listening, and I pass it and pass on my thanks to her because it was really wonderful. I would never have thought of that. I would never have thought of that either because I think I mentioned the day. That's almost like saying to yourself, if you were a pig owner and your pig got scraped, you put a rasher on it. it was, <laughs> you, <laughs> Something you, like that. You never but think it does of that. work. So if there's any else listening, I mean. It, it really is. It was marvellous. It cost me nothing because I already had the walnuts in the house. <laughs> okay, exactly. So if you have a walnut dresser and you get it scratched, yes, sh shell a walnut. Just break it so that the juice, sort of the, you know, soft bit inside and isn't rub it along it and it works. Isn't that amazing? Yep, it is. All right, then. Well, thank you for reporting could, back. Could I wish my, my husband happy wedding anniversary? This is our 48th wedding anniversary today. Oh, congratulations. So... Happy anniversary, Danny. I still love you after all this time. <laughs> <laughs> and are you going to do anything special? Are you going to well, we're going out this afternoon. Oh, lovely. Okay, going to have a wee meal or something? Like that. Yeah, something. Crack open a small bottle of Ask to Spirante. Ah, well, you never know. <laughs> all right, then. Well, congratulations. Uh, thank you very much, Jerry. Not at all. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. 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 Hey, you know what to do with your walnuts. That's Joe Brown. That's uh, a song called That's the Way the World Goes Round. That's the same Joe Brown that hits a very long time ago in the early 60s. That picture of you. In the night, there are sights to be seen. Do you remember all that stuff? Of course. I. That picture of One of my favourite songs. Um, if I'd known that, I wouldn't have sang it. Why not? Somebody on here, is there? Yes, a complaint. Oh, good. Hello, good morning. 
there's nothing good about it, will I tell you something? What? Thousands of listeners have turned off the radios, including myself. Why did they but do that? is what the hell's going on. What did they do that what, for? What's going on? What seems to be that you're talking what about... What do you the... mean, what seems to be a problem? You know right bloody well what the problem is. The breakdowns. But, but it's not a breakdown. What, what are you doing? We're listening on FM. Yes. One but two, two potatoes on the other side. I know. Why is people in Belfast supposed to listen to you when you're cutting them off? I, it's nothing to do with me. Oh, don't be talking. Uh, excuse me, who runs the show? I, well, it's not me, anyway, I'll tell you that. Well, <laughs> I knew that before it even started. Well, I tell you, this is ridiculous. Like, there's no apologies or anything being made here. Listen, let me tell you what the situation is. We, we split our frequencies. Anyway, here's a little snatch listen, of listen, what I potato, don't want to hear that. When you're driving a long time and want to go, well, uh, they don't call us go-go for nothing. <laughs> That's one of those Belfast actors that can't do a Belfast accent. What are you playing that to me for? That's one potato, you, you two think, potato. You're the type of, but you're like Kelly. You're getting the Kelly all the time. Whenever you get into a sticky spot, you always try and jump to something else. I know. Well, we'll tell you something. The people up and down this country right this minute are living absolutely... Li- it was a lovely song on. And yeah. all of a sudden, we're listening to nothing. Yeah, listen, this is not like you. I don't want to tell you. It's not like me. I just felt as the opinion correspondent had the phone on behalf of the thousands of people. Oh, I forgot your role. Uh, oh, that, that's your role, of course. Of course it's my role. That's why I'm ringing up as, as part of my role. I'm sorry. You, you get an easy ride with me. That's the problem with you. Well, I always give you an easy time. Yeah. But not today, Mr. Anders. Not yeah. today. You okay, are in big well, trouble, boy. Let me explain what's happening. Of course, uh, on a Tuesday, we break our, we split our well, frequencies. Well, sure, we know that. I, listen, I wouldn't split my frequencies for just anybody. We've well, split our frequencies today. today. But unfortunately, we've had some mechanical difficulty. No, it's not of my doing. It's the, the man opened the cable. I don't know who it is. The There's something seriously wrong with me. And I apologise from the bottom of my heart to the listeners who... But well, why can't you say that? Why can't you just come on and say that? Didn't I say it's that? It's and Raven. Didn't I say that? Then I apologise to You're the people. You're too late. You're too late. Okay, it was the middle of a lovely song. Did you start in the middle of the song? No, you didn't. No. No, but I'm sorry I've upset you. Well, it's not me. You've, well, you've upset my mom, mostly, and all the people up and down. It's okay, a whole well, load of people. I bet you it doesn't happen during talkback. Oh, you can bet your bottom dollar shoe on the internet. And <laughs> but see, as soon as you get on the internet, get you on the internet. I'm not getting on the internet. Get you on the internet. No, because that's where all the people... goes away. No. People always say to me, no, no people talking over there. See that fella get on the internet because we're wearing a holidays, can't hear him and all when we're away. I'm not getting on the internet because that's where all the pen pals go. <laughs> Do you remember you used to always see ads in the paper for pen pals from Kenya and New Zealand? You ever see the pages made in Sunday Life in the job? I know, I know. I mean, I think it's psychological. All the losers. I think the most... Oh, stop that. It's the losers. That's not. That's not right. Oh, that's terrible. They're the weirdos and the losers. I I know a girl wrote in. And they're the wells and the weird. I know a girl that met a fella. Wrote in, met a fella. Oh, she must have been desperate. Do you know many people rung up over 90? I know all the weirdos and the losers. I don't say some some of them are nice. No, I just thought. <laughs> well, I don't think people is bound to be one or two that's not bad. And all stuff. What kind of a one did she get? Oh, he seems sensible enough. Had he a few quid about him. stuff. Had a few quid about him. As a matter of fact, he has drives a lovely car. No. Oh, oh really? What was wrong with him? Must be something wrong with him. There's not. As a matter of fact, uh, was he an older know, man? I think he's separated or something. There. There's no children involved. Well, he was in. <laughs> But you, know, but you see, this is what happens, if I may be serious for a moment. You see, a lot of what? men there break up in their marriages, and then, you see, when they're 40 and stuff like that, and a man of 40 can't go into a disco and say, hey, baby, let's go. Well, you see, if you had been listening to Hugo Duncan yesterday, I nearly fell off my chair. Why, what did he say? He, he, he was on, and you know, eight people ride in, and uh, there's a country dance, and such and such. And, and he goes, tell them all where he's playing, yeah. I, I, but the next thing he comes up with, somewhere in Dundell Avenue or something, there's a separated and divorce club. <laughs> I don't think there's anything very funny about that. <laughs> no, but just the way, in the middle of the things that are going on, you know, there's there's a harvest service and there's a country dance and there's a separating <laughs> you, you think it just appeared out of, it was out of context, really? It wasn't in the right part of the programme, you well, know. I, I still feel as if I don't see anything funny about that, Michael. Oh, and yeah. I, 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 I <laughs> can't see, see what you, you, you find... up. You I can't see what you find amusing about this. Set me up. He did. And I did see not, if anybody no. says anything to me. I'm going to tell him. No, I did not. No, no, but it's uh, no. Difficult. Just the way you it's see, this difficult is it, for yeah, a man. This is what you can understand. Out and you you can understand. I have every step. Do, sim- do you realise we're talking at the one time? Well, if you we'll shut start, up, now, we've started to do that. You, you, you see, hours every day, two hours every day, talk. <laughs>
<laughs> We've started to talk at the one time. No, you see, it's it's very difficult for a man or a woman who comes out of a, re- a married relationship. I would imagine if so. I mean, what I mean? Not, I mean relationship myself. No, I don't for, know. 40 years old, maybe 42 well, I'm not years 40, old? No, I'm not 40. I mean, it's a, well, I'm not saying you are, but imagine someone get married when they're 21. You know, but there are people now who are married when the Bay City Rollers are big. Cherry Whittle Ted. And so, but hold on a minute, let me finish. This is important because these people have not really gone out since that. They go out for a meal on a Saturday night or something like that or go down to the pub for mm-hmm. a, a lager. Mm-hmm. But that's it. They've totally, they've sit, been watching Coronation Street for 20 years and suddenly things go wrong and the, 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 it breaks up. And then the man, after not being out for 20 years, or the woman, and after being watching Coronation Street for 20 years, I mean, you can't go into a pub and talk to a young girl about Coronation Street 15 years ago. Yes, but and they've no say. Skills. And that's why Hugo was talking about the clubs, the people get together and, and eventually merge themselves back into society. Oh, I mean, you can't go into a disco now and say, hey, heard of Bay City Rollers latest? It's really groovy. You can't do that. No, but you have listen, to have pills in listen, there's two things. You're, you're missing two real points here. First yeah. of all, what happened over the 20 years, right? Yes. That's the first thing. And the second thing, there's plenty of fish in the sea. Plenty of fish in the sea. Yeah, well, I'd you know take your word for it. I don't go out much. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm well, told, I thought that. When I'm I told, listened to you in the programme, I thought that fella doesn't get out much. No, I'm told there's a fish. Because down the hill, something shocking. I'm told there's a fish or two out there somewhere. Oh, oh, yes. I, you know, I myself have a good year or two left in me. Uh, you oh, know, I, I don't know. I, I don't, oh, I don't know. I wouldn't cancel me know. out right no, away. No, when you get on with people, no. I mean, I, I never get over the time that I spoke to you in the airplane and you just smugged at me and just, you know, oh... Maybe I didn't take a look of you. Well, you probably didn't. See, I didn't know who you were. <laughs> it's totally irrelevant. That see, if totally I had known who you were, I would have pretended to like no, a look of you. Listen, you see, this is where I've got you. This is, I've knew I've set you up here, right? Yes. You always talk about getting into the shop and how the people aren't very nice. Sometimes. That's right, yeah. Well, what'll it tell you? It's just like a customer in a shop. You don't know who that customer is when you're serving that customer. Exactly. You see? If at, if at any time our phone rings down in our distribution bank and one of us answered, we have a certain procedure to go through and everyone's treated the same and everyone gets their query dealt with immediately. But you know, the phone is never rung in my distribution bay. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>